If you're thinking about becoming a DevOps engineer in 2025, you are about to make a costly mistake. I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade. I now run my own AI cloud security consultancy. And through my academy, I've helped over 600 students learn cloud and AI. Having worked as a DevOps engineer before, I can tell you something that most people won't. This role is dying and it's happening faster than anyone wants to admit. What I'm about to share with you will save you months of wasted effort and position you for roles that actually have a few Future. But to understand why DevOps is falling apart, you need to understand why it existed in the first place. All right, imagine it's 2015, you are a developer at a company and you spend three months building this amazing new feature. You've tested everything on your laptop and it works perfectly. Then comes deployment day, when your code needs to go live for actual customers to use. Back then, here is what would happen. You'd package up your code and hand it over to the operational team. These were the people managing the actual production servers. You'd basically throw it over and say, here, make this work in production and then chaos. Your code would crash immediately, nothing would work, error messages everywhere, and the operations team would come back to you furious. Your code is broken and it's crashing our servers, they would say. And then you would be like, you know, what are you talking about? It works perfectly on my machine. You must have configured something wrong. This back and forth blame game would go on for weeks and sometimes even months. Meanwhile, the business was losing money because nothing was getting deployed and software is only valuable in production in front of users. This dysfunction was termed throwing code over the wall. It was insane, but it was also, you know, just normal. Every company worked this way. So DevOps was born to fix this mess, a new culture, a new philosophy. And the idea was brilliant. Instead of having these teams clash with each other, get them to work together, share responsibility, collaborate. And here is the key thing. DevOps was meant to be a philosophy, a way of working, not a job title. But guess what companies did? They completely missed the point. Instead of changing how teams work together, they just hired for a new role. DevOps engineer. Problem solved, right? wrong. Now you had developers still writing code and operations still managing servers. And this new DevOps engineer sitting right in the middle trying to translate between the two. We didn't eliminate this big wall. We just hired someone to stand on top of it. Want to deploy your code? Submit a DevOps ticket. System running slow? Ask DevOps to check it. Need more servers? Get in a DevOps queue. That said, has software deployment actually become faster and more efficient? Well, yes, of course. I saw this transformation happening myself when I was working at a Fortune 500 company and it was a night and day difference with how fast we were deploying code into production. Before it would take months, then it was taking literally a few minutes. But today, in 2025, things are starting to change and not in the way that you think. Because while companies have been busy hiring DevOps engineers to be middlemen, technology is evolving fast to make those middlemen obsolete. Think about what a DevOps engineer actually does day to day. Writing deployment scripts, configuring servers, setting up monitoring, managing databases. In short, these are repetitive tasks that follow the same patterns. And what's AI really good at? Pattern recognition and automation. GitHub Actions came along, GitLab CI, AWS Code Pipeline. Suddenly, these platforms can actually handle everything automatically. A developer pushes code and boom, it's tested, packaged, deployed, monitored, and scaled. No human was needed. I was working with a startup last month. Three years ago, they would have hired a DevOps engineer. And today, they're just simply using AI tools that handle everything those engineers would have done and it works better and it works faster and it never calls in sick. That's where this AI automation gets really problematic for anyone trying to break into DevOps today. From what I'm seeing, entry-level DevOps engineers are quickly disappearing. When AI can do most of the heavy load in any role, those companies are opting to freeze hiring. And this creates a classic catch-22. How do you become a DevOps engineer if all the junior positions have disappeared? You can't get experience if there's nowhere to start. And while AI was busy automating DevOps tasks, something else is happening that most people have completely missed. Companies are realizing that the DevOps engineer was trying to do too many different things. These people were supposed to be managing infrastructure, build CI CD pipelines, handle security, monitor systems, respond to incidents, and somehow also write some code. That is not one job, that's actually five jobs. If you know anything about efficiency, trying to get one person to do multiple roles means they end up producing very little across the board. So smart companies started splitting those responsibilities into more focused roles. Platform engineers grab the infrastructure automation piece. They are building internal platforms that make infrastructure invisible to developers. Click a button, get an environment. Then you have site reliability engineers, SREs. They took over monitoring and incident response. Google pioneered this because they realized keeping YouTube running at scale is completely different than building new YouTube features. Different mindset and different skills, but also different goals. Cloud engineers claim the actual infrastructure architecture. They are the ones who understand how to design systems that can handle millions of users without breaking.
engineering. And for me, cloud engineers have to be comfortable with CICD pipelines as well as infrastructure's code because they are not just clicking around in the AWS console. Instead, they are using Terraform, they're building deploying pipelines, and they're making infrastructure more programmable. And that's what makes them so valuable. They can architect and implement. Security engineers pulled away from all of the compliance and security work, and when a data breach costs just under $5 million and can tank your reputation, you can't just have security be just 10% of someone's job. But even if you ignore the automation and the role fragmentation, there's another problem that's been there from the very beginning. After this video, go look at 10 DevOps job postings. I guarantee that they're all asking for completely different things. One wants Kubernetes expertise, one wants CICD pipelines. This one needs AWS expertise, that one requires Python scripting. Oh, and this one wants you to know 30 different tools. Companies have literally no idea what they are actually hiring for. And to be fair, I think at times this can also be said for many roles. Job descriptions seem to have endless lists of requirements. That said, this confusion around what DevOps really means has happened in the early 2000s. Everyone wanted to hire webmasters. One person who could do design, development, databases, servers, everything. Now, when was the last time that you saw a webmaster job posting? Did you even know what a webmaster is? Exactly. The role quickly split into front-end developers, back-end developers, DBAs, UX designers. And I see the same thing happening to DevOps in the near future. So what should you do? Well, where's the opportunity in all of this chaos? Now, to me, there's one clear role that if you're either looking to break into tech or you want to stay ahead of the curve and position yourself where the demand is incredibly insane right now, it's cloud engineering. That is your play. And here is why it's different from DevOps. Cloud engineering is about understanding the fundamental building blocks that everything else runs on. When you know cloud, you're not learning random tools like DevOps. You're understanding how modern infrastructure actually works at scale, how networks connect, how to design systems that are reliable, how security layers protect data, how everything fits together. Every big tech company today runs on cloud infrastructure. Every AI model trains in the cloud. Every app that you use is hosted in the cloud. The cloud computing market is projected to explode from just under 900 billion to over $5.4 trillion in the next decade, with much of that growth coming from AI. And unlike DevOps, which has that seemingly impossible junior to senior gap, cloud engineering has clear entry points. Companies need cloud engineers at every level. They're hiring juniors, they're hiring cloud adjacent roles. And I mean, right now, there's literally over 5,000 jobs in the US alone on LinkedIn. And here is why mastering cloud engineering can actually open up an endless possibilities for your career. Cloud is like the Swiss army knife of engineering, because once you have the fundamentals down, you can literally move into virtually any specialization. Cloud security, AI, platform engineering, SRE, cybersecurity, cloud developer. There are so many options and it gives you the flexibility to pivot as the market it changes or as you discover what you actually enjoy and want to do. Mastering cloud gives you a variety of skill sets from lots of different domains. And it also means that you're not just pigeonholed into one specific area. And in the new world where job security isn't what it used to be, the agility of cloud unlocks for you is the job security. Now look, over 100,000 tech workers got laid off this year. The job market can be very brutal out there, depending on what skill set you have. Because as with almost everything, not everyone is being affected either equally or experiencing the same things. The managers, excess bureaucracy as Andy Jassy calls it, and people doing the work that AI can automate are struggling. Essentially the middlemen. But the specialists, the cloud architects, the cloud engineers, the platform engineers, SREs, cloud security engineers, AI engineers, they are in massive demand. Why? Well, because AI can't design complex distributed systems yet. It can't architect secure cloud infrastructure. It can't make strategic decisions about system design and business impact. These roles require deep expertise and not surface level knowledge. They require understanding principles and not just knowing tools. So here's my advice, and I'm giving it to you straight. Don't become a DevOps engineer. DevOps was a temporary bridge between the old world and the new world, and that bridge is simply crumbling. Don't be standing on it when it falls. The entry path is disappearing, the role is fragmenting, and the title is quite frankly confusing for most. So start with cloud fundamentals, build some real projects, get some certifications, implement infrastructure's code, use AI, show that you can use the cloud to solve actual business problems, and then specialize what interests you and what the market needs. Then you will have the flexibility if you want to specialize somewhere else. But remember, cloud is a speciality in itself. And as always, I'm rooting for your success. Good luck.